Yes, your gun might fail. And we will teach you how to make sure you can get it back in the fight. But first, we got to tell you how it works so that we can tell you how it fails and how to correct those failures. I'm Kevin Michalowski, Director of Content for the U.S. Concealed Carry Association. And in this video, I'm going to show you how auto-loading pistols function, how they might fail, and how you can correct those failures. It's very important to keep your gun in the fight when you need to shoot your gun. You really need to shoot your gun. So you got to make sure that it's working. And the best way to make sure it works is to know how it works and how to fix those failures. At the end of the video, guess what? You get a chance to win a free gun. So it's a real deal. Watch this video to the end and there's going to be an opportunity for you to win a free gun. Not any of these guns. These, these are mine. Um, but these will get, we'll get you a chance to win a gun coming at the end of the video. If you're new here, you need to know and understand that having a gun does not mean you are prepared for armed self-defense. That's what we do at the U.S. Concealed Carry Association. We provide people education and training to help you avoid danger and save lives. We're going to do that by teaching you how your guns work today. So let's start with one of the oldest styles of auto-loading pistol. This is a 1911 version pistol. This one happens to be made by a, um, a company, American Tactical Arms, and but they all basically work the same. So we'll talk about the function of the pistol, how they work, and why you hear some of this terminology around them. Then we'll show you common malfunctions of what's gonna happen with your pistol to make it not work. So you will notice that you saw this slide move. So I'm gonna take the magazine out. Basic pistol parts, slide, frame, magazine. Those are the three major components that you need to know. Typically your problems stem from a magazine problem, but we'll get to that later. So the three major portions are the slide, the frame, and the magazine. And the slide is reciprocating. It is the moving part of the gun. So we're gonna close this. See that? That is how your gun functions. That is how it takes ammunition from the magazine, puts it into the chamber, fires it at the bad guy, and then kicks it out of the chamber so it can put a new one back in there. That's what's happening with this reciprocating slide on your gun. So one of the terms that you'll hear is a single action or a double action pistol, okay? The original old version of this, this is what we're talking about, 1911, more than 100 years old, is the single action auto-loading pistol. Notice that the hammer is cocked here on this single action pistol. And when we say single action, that means the trigger performs the single function of dropping the hammer. It just releases it, and lets it drop, does one function. Now the hammer is down, nothing is happening, I'm still pulling the trigger, nothing is happening. In the entire sequence of firing, in the firing sequence, the hammer falls, hits the firing pin, drives the firing pin into the primer that's in the cartridge, the cartridge goes off, and then this slides back, picks up a new cartridge, excuse me, kicks out the old cartridge, picks up a new cartridge, and puts it in. And look at that, your hammer is cocked and ready to go for you to touch the trigger again, press and fire another shot. Single action pistol does the single action, the trigger does the single action of moving the hammer. So let's move on to a more modern double action auto loading pistol. And I will move the magazine. And the reason I'm doing that, let me tell you that right from the start too. So you see, you can look down the magazine well and see me through there magazine well is empty. When you insert the magazine in an auto-loading pistol, on many, if not most, modern auto-loading pistols, after you fire all of your rounds from the magazine, the magazine follower is empty, it pushes up on the slide lock or slide catch, and the slide stays open, thus reminding you, you are out of ammo. Trade out a magazine, put more bullets in your gun. So. But we're talking about the double action function on a pistol like this. So we'll close the slide. Remember, slide, frame, magazine. And you'll notice that this hammer is still cocked. It is still in the single action mode. But this gun can function as a double action and a single action. Using the decocking lever on the side here, we press this decocking lever all the way down, and it decocks the gun. Now the hammer is in the down position, actually kind of in a half cock position in there, not fully down. But now you can use the trigger to perform two functions, double action. It will cock the hammer, see the hammer moving as I pull the trigger, and release the hammer at the same time. 
Thus, we have what's called a double action pistol. And many autos, some are double action only, which always function. That means you have to pull the long, heavy trigger pull all the way through to move that hammer. And again, the hammer strikes the firing pin, strikes the cartridge, reciprocates the slide, and resets. Notice what we have happen here now. After the slide resets, the function of the gun sets back to single action. A single action trigger pull is typically shorter and lighter than a long double action pull. So this is a DA double action for the first shot slash SA single action for all following shots. And then when you're done with your string of fire, you hit that decocker switch again and you decock it, removing it to its safer position, giving you that longer trigger pull. So double action, the two functions of cocking and releasing the hammer. See, it cocks the hammer all the way to the back, and when you get to the end of the trigger stroke, releases the hammer. Slide reciprocates and cocks the mechanism, thus giving you a single action pull. And if you notice right here, the trigger pull is very short to make the single action function on the gun. Let me lock this slide to the rear, and then moving into the even more modern. This HK VP9, is one of many, many guns now that are called striker fired pistols. You'll notice that there is no external hammer on this gun, okay? All of the firing mechanism, the movement of the firing pin is done internally, and they don't even call it a firing pin, they call it a striker now. Um, using string pressure, cams, a lot of companies do it in different ways, but it all comes basically with the same function. Now we have a passive safety right here on the trigger. You have to make sure your finger is fully on the trigger to engage that passive safety. And then that gun, let's double check and make sure that we're safe, physically and visually inspect. This gun will now have a round in the chamber. It is not fully cocked at this point. Pulling the trigger releases that mechanism and fires the gun. And you don't have any hammer movement on the back. But notice that this trigger did not reset. Now I'm pulling, it did not reset the internal mechanism. The movement of the slide resets that internal mechanism, allowing you to pull the trigger and fire another shot. Here's the trigger reset, and now we fire another shot. By far the most popular pistols being sold today are these striker fired pistols, typically with a polymer frame to make them lightweight, and they're very simple, easy to use. Uh, you don't have to worry about any other manual at arms, things like the decocking lever or the external safeties or anything like that. On the single action pistol, you'll see that you have a frame mounted safety so that when the gun is cocked, you put the safety on, you can't pull the trigger. Press the safety down, now you can pull the trigger and make it function. So, and on a double action pistol, some of them have slide mounted safeties up here, but by and large, the safety function on this safety as we will call it is this long trigger pull and there is a block that keeps the hammer from striking the firing pin unless the trigger is all the way to the rear so lots of different things going on this is why you need to get to know your individual firearm and how it works and how it makes it work in a few minutes i'm going to talk about common malfunctions what they're called and how to clear them but first remember before we get into this malfunction portion there's gonna be an opportunity for you to win a brand new gun at the end of this video. So keep watching to the end. We'll show you where to click and how you get your chance to win this brand new gun. So I'm using this polymer striker fired pistol to show common malfunctions. Not because these commonly malfunction, but because it's the most common pistol that's out on the market right now. And you'll see that I have the magazine loaded with these snap caps, these dummy rounds in here, so you can see kind of what's going on. And this will also show you a little bit about how the gun is functioning when we're putting it, when we're putting rounds through the firearm. So we insert the magazine, and you can see now the dummy round right there being prepared or in position to be loaded into the chamber. Now when we release the slide, the slide stripped that top round off of the magazine and placed it into the chamber. When we pull the trigger, that, that round fires, the slide reciprocates, and the mechanism yanks the fired shell casing out of the chamber and inserts a new one just this fast, actually faster than this. 
Now you saw that other round, that dummy round, fly out, land on the table. Now there's another round in there. This is why we call it an auto-loading or a semi-automatic pistol. You have to release the trigger all the way to the front, through the trigger reset, and then pull it one more time to get one more bullet. If you hold it back, it won't keep firing. It's not a machine gun. The mechanism goes to the rear, kicks that round out, puts a new round in. Now listen, you can hear the trigger reset, and now you're ready to fire again. So that's how it's functioning. That's the sequence. There's actually many, many steps. If we were to go through the firing sequence of a gun, we're starting from pulling the trigger. The striker hits the primer. The primer ignites the powder. The powder burns, pushing the projectile, the bullet, out the muzzle. And a portion of that energy pushes the slide to the rear. The extractor hooks on the rim of the round. This rim right here, there's a metal hook that hooks on the rim of the round, extracting the spent casing. As it comes backwards, it hits what's called an ejector. I think I can show you that in here. There you can see right in there. It's a small little tab. That is the ejector. When the casing hits that ejector, it is kicked up and out of the gun. The slide comes fully to the rear and then grabs the next round by pushing on the back end of that, taking it out of the magazine, stripping it out of the magazine, guiding it into the chamber, and the movement of the slide resets the firing mechanism so that you can then reset the trigger, pull the trigger for another shot. That's, in a nutshell, how your firearms works. Now let's talk a little bit about what common problems you might see. This is one that happens quite a bit. Notice that there was a round in the chamber. In being safe, whenever you pick up a gun, open that action to make sure there's no rounds in the chamber. So if you see something like this, we'll set this up right here, while you're shooting, this is called a stovepipe malfunction. This typically happens if you're not holding your gun firmly. And we did a recent video about grip and a firm shooting platform. If you're not holding your gun firmly and you're kind of limp wristing it, when the gun goes off, there's not enough kinetic energy to get this casing all the way out of your chamber and out of the ejection port of your gun. What happens is it gets caught up, the slide continues to come forward and catches this, and it looks like a stovepipe. You'll have it an empty shell casing stuck on the side of your pistol. And you'll notice that you'll have what's called a dead trigger. In just about all of these incidents, when you're running your gun and you get to what we call a dead trigger, you're pulling that trigger and it doesn't work, think, okay, something bad has happened. The gun is not working, okay? To clear most malfunctions, we do the same movement every time. We tap the magazine to make sure it's firmly seated. Remember I said at the beginning, most of the problems you're gonna have are from your magazine. It's either not all the way in the gun or something bad happened to your magazine and it's not feeding rounds into the chamber properly. So the first thing you do is you tap that magazine. Then you roll the gun to the side and you rack the side to the rear, letting that round fall out. And then you put a new round in and now you're ready to fire. So you come back up on target and if you shoot again, and you get a click instead of a bang. That click is the loudest sound in the world when you're expecting a bang. You get a click instead of a bang. Rack the slide again, just to make sure that you have a round in that chamber. If you still get a, a click instead of a bang, you're out of the fight, okay? Your gun's not working. You need to dump your magazine and get more rounds. Now this is called a double feed malfunction. And it happens when, for whatever reason, the extractor doesn't hook on the rim of that cartridge and pull it to the rear. The slide goes to the back, catches this other round as it pushes it forward. Now check it out. We've got one round trying to get into the space that is already occupied by the spent cartridge. We have a stuck situation right here. And again, dead trigger. Your gun isn't doing anything. You're in a hurry, you're shooting, you're scared, and suddenly you have a dead trigger and it's not working. You need to assess what's going on right here and assess quickly. That's stuck in there. So we're gonna take the magazine out this time and you have to pull it out. It's gonna be wedged in there. Yank it out. Now you saw this slide forward. Did it slide forward on a good round or a bad round? We don't know, we don't want a better life on that. Rack this slide three or four times to get that spent casing out of there. Then insert your magazine, 
I'm gonna suggest go to your spare magazine and insert your spare magazine into the gun, rack the slide again, and get back in the fight. If you don't have a spare magazine, you will probably have to reinsert, yes, you will definitely have to reinsert the magazine that you have there. But that is how you clear that double feed malfunction. Any other malfunction that you're running into with your firearm, tap, rack the slide, and get back in the fight. You wanna make sure that you're getting any problem cartridge or problem shell casing out of there and reinserting fresh, good ammunition to get you back in the fight. Let me give you a quick recap now of what we just went over. How guns operate, we're talking about the single action gun here that does the single function of op the trigger doing the single function of operating the hammer. That's all that the trigger does is allow the hammer to fall. The slide reciprocates, the empty shell casing comes out when the slide is back, the new round goes into the chamber when the slide comes forward, and then you release the trigger to its reset point and you are ready to fire again. That's the basic operation of an auto-loading firearm. On the double action auto-loading firearm, let's make sure that we see that the trigger is doing the two actions, the double action performs two functions of cocking and releasing the hammer. That's the difference between single action and double action. The trigger does two functions, it's cocking and releasing the hammer. On a DASA, double action first shot, first shot is double action, slide reciprocates, now the gun is set up as a single action with a much shorter and lighter trigger pull for that single action shot. That is how that works. Let's make sure we lock this one open, set it down on the table. And then of course the striker fired pistol. No exposed hammer, the firing pin is internal, and the functioning mechanism runs off of a passive safety on the trigger on most of these modern striker fired pistols. So when we close the slide and the gun is in battery and ready to go, we get a firing grip, we press that trigger all the way to the rear, and then everything else is just the same. We really haven't changed a lot of firearms technology since 1911. The slide reciprocates, comes forward, puts a new round in. Well, let's do that right. Slide reciprocates, kicking out the empty shell casing, grabbing a new round from the magazine, putting it into the chamber, getting you ready to fire. And there you're ready to go. One other thing I wanna talk about is holding this gun properly when you're firing. Make sure that you have nothing behind the slide. The slide reciprocates and moves. If you are holding in a proper grip, you'll see that nothing is gonna get in the way of the slide. If you put your thumb back here on your support hand in an improper grip, this is what we call a self-correcting problem. That slide's still gonna come back with a lot of force. It's going to cut you, it's going to hurt you, it's going to cause problems with your feeding and function of your gun, and it will hurt so bad, you will never want to do that again. Good grip will keep that gun functioning. Now, as promised, here we are with your opportunity to win a free gun. Not one of these guns. Need to make that perfectly clear for all sorts of reasons. You're not winning one of these guns, but you are getting the chance to win a gun. This is what we do at the U.S. Concealed Carry Association. So we make sure that you have the tools needed to protect yourself and your loved ones. We give you that education, that training to avoid danger and save lives. Best way to do that typically is with a gun when you're in a deadly force situation. So we're gonna give you the opportunity to win yourself a free gun. What you're gonna to need to do, click on the link down in the description. There's a link down there giving you that opportunity to enter to win this free gun. So that's really all there is to it. I wanna thank you folks for watching. If you really like these videos, subscribe to this page because we give you more great videos all the time. Click that notification bell. We'll let you know every time we come out with something new. I'm Kevin Michalowski, Director of Content for the U.S. Concealed Carry Association. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you in the next video.